This is John for Global Traveler. Today I'm talking travel with Tom Stuker, the man of 23 million flying miles. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, John. How are you? I am great. It's been a long, we were just talking a little bit earlier. It's been a long time. I interviewed you years ago. I followed your flight career since then. 23 million miles. Um, tell us a little bit, where, when did that start? Well, uh, I, I started kind of flying uh I bought this pass, you know, in 1990, and it was uh, it was purely a business decision, and so it was because we were doing a lot of international uh, consulting, and didn't think about all the crazy fun flying that I started doing. Probably after I hit my 10 million miles, I started getting the itch to go everywhere I can in the world, and probably for the last uh, 12 years, I've been averaging about 900,000 miles a year. So that's when I got really crazy and flew over 10 million miles just in the last uh, 12 years or so. So when you bought this pass for, for I believe you paid $290,000, I assume you did a lot of math to figure it out. Um, do you have, have you calculated since then, like how much approximately you will, you will have saved over those years? Uh, a lot more than the 290. Actually, <laughs> I, paid two, I paid 290 for the... Um, uh, single pass, but I opted in after a couple months after that to buy the companion pass for a total of five hundred and ten thousand dollars. But um, yeah, I, I even even at reduced fares because when I bought the pass, there was no um, there was no A fares for first class. It wasn't discounted first. Everything was full fare F back then. So it was a, an a unbelievable investment at the in those early years. But even at reduced first class fares or business class fares, uh, I, I've made out pretty good. So, so it's probably a silly question, but do you actually enjoy flying, or is it just a necessary evil of your life? No, I really, really enjoy flying. I know the stuff that comes along with it. I mean, I'm currently in a flight situation today with delays and possible cancellations, and that's part of the. Part of the travel, it's just, you know, there's snowstorms if you drive. There's uh, there, there's always going to be things that could impede your travel um, your travel plans. But, uh, no, I enjoy it. And probably the, the my favorite part of flying is the great service on, on the airline. I mean, I know people might disagree with me, especially if you're in coach and you're way back where <laughs> and you might not get the service that you're doing business class. But uh, at the same time, uh, I got to know a lot of the crews on United and the crews, I would rate them a 10 out of 10. And uh, so, I mean, I, I really enjoy, I really enjoy flying. I enjoy the people I meet, my, my seat passengers. I, I like to meet them. I like the people and I, I meet in the lounge. So no, I really love flying. And I read you have a favorite seat. You get the same seat every time. Well, domestically, my favorite seat is one B, right? Uh, on the aisle, the bulkhead. A lot of people don't like bulkhead. I happen to be one that really does. I have shorter legs. I don't like people putting their seat behind me anymore than somebody else does. So I like the bulkhead. I like 1B when I'm domestic. And on international flights, if I'm flying by myself, I like 1A or 1L over single seats by the window, uh, all by yourself. And the, the leg room is always better on bulkhead, by the way, international. And if I'm traveling with somebody, I like those two center bulkhead seats if I'm traveling with a, a business partner or my wife, you know. Now, you've been, I, I've read it, obviously, you've been to Australia, I read like 300 times, you've been to all over the place. Um, do the cities become a blur at that point? Well, sometimes you wake up and you see a McDonald's or a Burger King. Actually, in, in, in Australia, they don't have Burger Kings, they call them Hungry Jacks, long story, but uh, <laughs> same same franchise. But um, yes, every once in a blue moon, you tend to wake up and it, uh, it's not because of a, a little too much wine or champagne necessarily. It's just that uh, uh, you're right. A lot of things become deja vu and because a lot of places are so similar. But uh, no, it's I pretty not much know my way around when I wake up in the city these days. I pretty much know where I'm at. So. Now, I know people have asked you this before, but I'm going to throw a little twist on it. I know people are going to ask you, what's your favorite city? And it's easy to say Paris or London or, or you know, Rome. Give me a couple underrated cities that people wouldn't expect you to tell me. 
wow um i find i find great happiness in like airport or every city i go to because it's the people you're with like people will ask me where's my favorite place to go and i'll say anywhere my wife and kids are with me i don't care if they want to go to two Timbuktu. If I'm with my wife, if I'm with my kids, then that's going to be a great place. And I don't care what kind of hotel or what the situation is. If I'm with my family and loved ones, that's my favorite place. My wife and I have favorite places for different reasons. Um, I happen to think uh, that Italy is the most romantic country. Paris is the most romantic city. Europe, just Europe alone, everywhere, just the history of Europe is so fascinating. Uh, we love Hawaii, been there 200 times. It's like, uh, it's, it's the United States piece of uh, paradise, obviously. Uh, I love Thailand, the most relaxing country. I love Australia because it's the friendliest country in the world. Really? It, you know, without, it's the friendliest English speaking country, and that includes America. But uh, the, the Aussies really have it right. And, uh, and the New Zealanders will probably put up an argument to that, too. And uh, that's a wonderful, wonderful country as well. But uh, I like different like different countries for different reasons. I like different cities for different reasons. I mean, I like the excitement of South Beach and 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 uh, and Vegas. But I gosh, I just I just went up to St. Catharines, Ontario wow. to visit one of my closest friends where the the, the the Canadian wine countries up there, and that's phenomenally beautiful. And the people out there are so friendly. And that's that's the thing in my life. It's not the Taj Mahal or the pyramids or the Great Wall in China. I've seen all these things, and they're all amazing. But nothing's more amazing than the people you meet in all these different countries. Well, you've never been to Antarctica, I read. No, no, I'm not not on my bucket list. And I don't know if United's ever going to fly there. So. Well, that brings me to the next question. So of all the cities, you've been to you know, dozens, hundreds of cities. So is there any city, is there any place that is on your bucket list that you're going to make sure you go? Well, there's a couple of places that United doesn't currently go to, but that's okay. I still want to go to, uh, I want to go to Budapest. Uh, I'd like to go to Poland. I'd like to go to Krakow, uh, probably first and then Warsaw. Um, there's a lot of places in Germany that I, excuse me, a lot of places in Europe in general that I haven't seen that I still want to. I've been to Ukraine. I've been to Kiev a couple of times and before all this craziness happened. And uh, it's so sad what's happening there because it's such a beautiful, beautiful country with great people. Um, there's, uh, I'd like to go to Southeast Asia. I'd like to go to Maybe Laos or and, and and Cambodia and Vietnam. Those are a couple of countries I'd like to probably still visit. Uh, I've been about everywhere. I've been over a hundred countries. So there's oh. there's some that I'm not in a hurry to go back to. Uh, uh, Russia probably wouldn't be on my bucket list to go back to because next thing you know I'll be accused of being a spy or something. So and <laughs> and don't, uh, don't even want to go. Don't want to go there with the politics right now. Sorry. I, you know, that's a, a wise decision. No, yeah. with uh, along with along with all the flights you've done, you also use your points from those flights for some interesting things. Um, one of those interesting things was you were on probably my favorite all time TV show of all, of ever, Seinfeld. You had a, 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 a background role on that show for an episode. Well, I, I background role might be a little overstatement. I mean. The, I think I was on a total for six or eight seconds. If you blink, you miss me. I, was, <laughs> I caught it. <laughs> I was I was on the uh, one of the season finales where George's girlfriend dies from licking envelopes. I was in the diner sitting behind Jerry and Janine Garofalo uh, during that episode. Uh, the whole experience of getting to meet the crew and staying at a park Hyatt and driving a Jaguar for four days. Uh, it was one of the United's first auctions, and it was a. Uh, Really exciting. I bid 431,000 or 451,000, I think it was, miles. And I do it all over again because I'm a Seinfeld junkie just like you are. And um, it was a really, really fun experience. But that's one of many, many auctions that I've won on United Airlines or bid on and, and, and won. Uh, they have a thing called Mileage Plus Exclusives, which will, which give, uh, you, you know, uh, mileage earners a chance to experience things from suites to a, a sports sporting event to 
uh, golf tournaments, it's just so many things, unbelievable things you could do with miles. And uh, that's why I love Miles Plus. I think it's been voted like the number one frequent flyer program, like 14 years in a row or something. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of people don't know this. Even if you don't fly a lot, you could earn miles so many different ways, which means if you only fly once or twice a year, you could probably fly first class if you play the mileage game pretty good because so many ways to earn it. It's starting with getting yourself a mileage plus credit card, you know? Well, there, actually, you just answered my next question. I was going to ask you for the Tom Stuker travel tip, but it sounds like you just gave it to me. Now, I'll, get, I'll give you my number one tip of all time in a, in a lot of different articles right now. But the number one tip I give people, especially, gosh, during the summertime where there's so many – uh, cancellations and delays because of weather. My best travel tip, it has four benefits to it. It's to get your butt out of early and take the earliest possible flight. Take that 6 or 6.30 flight for four reasons. Number one, it's going to be cheaper. You save money, you can spend on meals and hotels. Number two, lot it's, it's more likely that you'll have more empty seats on that flight so that you book a window in the aisle and you got that middle middle uh, middle seat to yourself, more elbow room. Number three, it's more likely to be on time. Weather delays are caused by storms and storms are in the afternoon and evenings. That first flight is a very dependable flight and it'll get you on your way to go a, a lot more dependably. And then last but not least, if you're a first class wannabe, then your chances of upgrading are much, much higher on that first flight because of seat availability. So you got four good reasons. Now, at the same time, if you go, I don't want to get up that early, then don't be the person that bitches and moans in an <laughs> airplane airport at five o'clock in the afternoon when the flights are delayed or canceled. Hey, I'm with you. I'm at that airport. I, I will take the first flight I can get. I just want to get there and get it done smooth as early as possible. So yeah, I, it gives you more time to enjoy your hotel. I mean, exactly. if you're tired because you didn't sleep much, then sleep on the beach or relax at the resort on a hammock. But go on that first flight when you can. Exactly. Now, you you, you were at 23 million miles, roughly. Um, are you, or I shouldn't say roughly, you've passed 23 million miles. Are Is there anybody close to you? And are you worried about somebody catching you? Well, no, first of all, the latest is I'm, I just passed. 23 million 600 all right uh, i should hit 24 probably in december uh god willing and health wise uh, 25 million in in uh in 2025 uh i've applied to the guinness book of world records i know i have it i just i'd like to have it authenticated by um by guinness oh yeah um i I know the guy that has number two. He used to be number one. I passed him over the last 10 years by by five or six million miles, literally. And um, so he was a good friend. He's, he's, I think he's not happy that I passed him, <laughs> and he'll be replaced in the, in the record books. But um, I, with, with the second highest person being about five or six million behind me in the world, I don't see anybody passing me while I'm above ground. I mean, obviously, with the supersonic jets and who knows what travel, maybe they will go to the moon someday. But uh, um, but I've already flown enough to be there 48 times or 49 times or something. So I don't see anybody passing me. At the end of the world, uh, there's no Pulitzer Prize for flying. There's no, uh, there's no big cash bonus by being the number one flyer. I'll probably help me when I get on the speaking cir circuit next year. And hopefully with my book coming out, but uh, 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 so I'm, like I said, uh, it. I never set out to be the world's number one flyer. It just was never in, 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 in my horizon, and I just I didn't see that. But uh, over the last couple of years, when I found out that you know I was passing him, I was getting excited about okay, let's make this official. You know, sure, sure, it's competition. There's. It's still statistics, and you, you hold that record and get his book of world records. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, the guy that's number two is really one of the classiest people you ever meet. He's from London, lives, lives in Ukraine as well. Um, Fred Finn, really great guy, great guy. Well, you're, you're two great guys, and you're two great travelers. 
before I let you go, you mentioned the book. So if uh, if you want to talk a little bit about the book or promote anything else you'd like to, to throw out there, let the readers and viewers know. The book hopefully comes out in December, along with uh, hitting 24 million and uh, turning 70 all in the same month. So I'm aiming for that. I'll let you be one of the first ones to know about it. I'll send you a copy. I'll let you read it, and we'll talk about it on our next interview. That would be fantastic. That would be great. Is there any place you want to tell people to find you online, or or is it just yes? I'm at uh, I'm at UA One Flyer uh, for my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram because I'm going to be a lot more active on my Instagram. I'm on uh, uh, my my email address is ua one flyer at yahoo.com right and um but that's the best way i'm going to be putting a new website together some people were finding me on a website of a business that i have no affiliation with anymore uh so i have to kind of start a new website out there but uh you know find me on flyer talk find me on facebook you know i'm on facebook flyer talk um or email me at ua one flyer uh at yahoo.com you know. sounds good Tom. Tom but follow good. me Follow me on Instagram because we're going to have a lot of fun on Instagram between now and when the book comes out. Well, I'll be following you. I think I already am following you. If I'm not, I will be. I will be following yep. you. Uh, Tom, I really I appreciate your time. It was great catching up with you. When the book comes out, when you got more updates, we'll be glad to have you back on and see what you got going. Oh, thank you so much, John. You have a great day and safe travels. You too, my friend. Be careful and enjoy. Right. 